Big Willie's in the house. Pro titles! Hello! Good evening, you're also welcome to the show. Hey, we're all in a great mood tonight, aren't we? Yes! Yeah. Christmas is coming and the Christmas ads come out. John Lewis, M&S, even McDonald's have got one this year because, you know, nothing says Christmas lunch like takeaway in the car. <laughs> um, <laughs> Happy meal? Not very, no. <laughs> <laughs> The McDonald's ad features a little green monster and a young girl. And there's a lovely heartwarming moment where the monster gives the girl a big cuddle. Aww. Aww. And she gives him COVID. Come early on my show tonight. We've got a great line of guests for you. Later on, we'll be hooking up with Hamilton creator turned director Lynn Manuel Miranda. Yeah. And we'll have music and chat from Rising Star and one of my favorite singers, Yola, will be here. Yeah. But here with me now, they're the married comedy couple who've taken the podcast world by storm. It's Rosie and Chris Ramsey. He's the TV presenter turned best-selling novelist into Richard Osman. <laughs> and he's not just one of the biggest film stars in the world now, he's an author too. It's Will Smith, everybody! <laughs> yeah! Yes! Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, uh. We need no excuse, but it's always nice to yeah. listen to a bit of that. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Nice to see you Thank all. You. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Everyone yeah. looking lovely. You, Will Smith, look very svelte. S svelte, yes. Svelte. Tone. Yeah, that's what, that's, what, that's what they call me in Philly. Swell. <laughs> Spelt Willie. <laughs> Wait, dog, no, you can't say that in Britain. I keep forgetting. It means something different. It does. <laughs> you don't want to spell Willie. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a podcast episode for you two. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you getting to shape for something? Yeah, well, COVID restrictions, uh, I, I sort of... Uh, ballooned a little, you know, during, <laughs> during that time. Now, so. you posted this picture of oh. you... This is you balloon. I forgot you Most of us... Oh, most yeah. of us dream of looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's me when I'm eating clean. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my after yeah. if I ever did an after. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so this, this grotesque figure of a man... <laughs> uh, you couldn't stand it anymore. Yeah. So, but you really went for it. Yeah, I really went for it. I, I uh, so I dropped... The, I'm down 15 kilo from that picture right now. Wow. I love so. it. In America, that would get a round of applause, wouldn't it? Over right. here, like, <laughs> no, no, no. Here, here the line, what's a kilo? How much is 15 kilo in pounds? Oh, 30 pounds. Oh, so... Ooh, yes, 30, really yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Thought, now, we're, now we're interested. Wait, so, you know, you... <laughs> you know, because I was only saying kilos because I was in... In Europe. In Europe. Think again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, had, we had a whole thing. We had a whole thing. We missed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's good, because we missed it in America, too. Yeah. 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 And it's lovely to have you because, genuinely, these guys are proper Will Smith fans. Oh. Richard Osman. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, everybody is, but yeah. he's a proper fan. Right. Who was not? Who was not a huge Will Smith fan? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean, but then, very nicely, I think uh, Will's publishers did a lovely thing for you. Oh yeah, they were. They said um, they knew I was coming on with you, mm -hmm. and you've written this book. They said, "Would you like a copy of Will's book?" And I said, well, of course I'd love a copy of Will's book. Thank you. So they sent it to me. And I said, do you think Will would like a copy of my book? And they went, he's quite busy. I would love a copy of that book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Check his hotel room when he yeah. leaves. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now... Chris and Rosie Ramsey, not just the biggest podcast in the country, biggest podcast tour in the world. Yes. Ooh, now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you were also some of the biggest Will Smith fans. Oh, God. Oh, I was going to play it, Will, I was going to play it cool. I honestly was going to be like, Will? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the levels of playing it cool I'm doing now deserve an uh, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Can, uh, what is it? You know the lyrics to an entire album, is it? Al almost the entire album. Obviously, wow. Jiggy, Miami, your yeah, big hitters, yeah. they're in there forever. That's um, fantastic. When my mum <laughs> used to... Mum, mother, when, when, when she... Mum, yeah, yeah, mom, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we're trying to keep it international. Yeah, yeah. 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 How many kilos is she? <laughs> 
<laughs> she would not let me see on TV. <laughs> she's very little. <laughs> um, she, uh, when she used to go shopping at the supermarket on a Saturday, um, I used to get bored in the shop, so I would sit in the car with Big Willie style. That's and fantastic. Not stop, dude. Yeah. Wow. Every night after right, school, right, Fresh right, Prince. Right. I can't go. <laughs> it's well bloody Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, so, uh, Rosie, how many kids do you have now? Is two? Kids, two. Kids. Two. two, yeah. Two kids. Will, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Will and Wilhelmina. <laughs> 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 but now, uh, so, so it, it's Robin, Robin and Rafe. Robin and how Rafe. old is Robin now? Robin's six. Okay. And Rafe so is ten months. You, yeah. sent us, wow. you sent us a video yeah. of Robin. Uh, he looks like he's just a couple of months old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is about five and a half years ago, so they haven't done this for you. <laughs> this is a video of Chris serenading <laughs> his, his uh, really very baby son, Robin, with his rendition of Miami. Here we go. Miami. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that beach, feeling the heat. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't feel that, you don't feel that. Wait, 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 wait for the response. <laughs> 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 Yo. Not, not feeling it. That's That's fantastic. Oh dear. Oh wow. So proper fan, proper fan. Uh, yes. uh, now, Will, we've got lots to talk about tonight because you've got your autobiography, Will, which yeah. is out now to rave reviews. Mm. But uh, we'll be talking about that throughout the show. But let's start with your brand new movie. Yes. Uh, this is King Richard, and you play Richard Williams, the father of Venus and Serena. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it is. Like, if you think you know that story, you don't. It is extraordinary. What do you want to tell us about it? You know, it, it was, you know, such an opportunity for me, um, you know, to dive into the, the life of this family. You know, we... If any tennis fans have a bit of an image of Richard Williams, the overbearing, crazy father in the stands with, with Venus and Serena, but as I spent uh, time with the, the family and started to really uncover the story, it is, it, it's amazing. He predicted Venus and Serena being number one and number two in the world two years before they were born. Whoa. He wrote a 78-page yeah. plan two years before they were born. What? And he went and he studied tennis. They studied while uh, his wife, Orsine, was pregnant. They worked on it, and it was, it was a prophecy, you know? Then Venus was born, and I, I, I was asking Orsine, I was like, well, what if you would have had a boy? And she said, well, I asked Richard that. He said, no, no, ain't gonna be no boy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it was like this really crazy wow. prophecy that he had. And when you think about it, it's, it's so amazing, it's hard to, to comprehend. Number one and number two in the world yeah. as sisters, mm -hmm. right? It's there, like, was, there was no tennis in the family, right? No tennis. He didn't play tennis. Wow. They should have called this film Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> I'm, hearing, I'm hearing Will doesn't want to see my book now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and listen, we've got a clip. This is you as Richard uh, getting very involved in a TV interview. Mm -hmm. Do you want to turn pro? Yes. A lot of people are excited to see how you do against players like Celis. Do you think you can beat her? I know I could beat her. You know you can beat her. Very confident. I'm very confident. You say it so easily. Why? Because I believe it. But you haven't played a match in almost three years. All right, uh, ho hold it right there, if you don't mind. Let me tell you why. Richard, we're doing an interview. What, what she had said, she said it was so much confidence to face time, but you keep going on and on. But you can't just keep interrupting. If but what you got to understand is you're dealing with the image of a 14-year-old child. And this child gonna be playing when your old ass and me gonna be in the grave. When she had said something, we done told you what's happening. You are dealing with a little black kid. Let her be a kid. Now, she done answered it with a lot of confidence. Leave that alone. Ooh, yeah. Wow. wow. Um, 
And, and it is such a kind of intimate, emotional depiction of that family and Absolutely. their story. Yes. Have Venus and Serena watched this? Yes. Oh, that, so mm. when it started, you know, I went to the family. I said, I love this story. I want to tell this story. And Venus and Serena said, um, OK, we, we will see you through the process and we will executive produce the process, but we're going to have to see the movie before we decide to, whether or not we're going to put our names on it. <gasps> Whoa. So I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I get the call a couple months ago, Venus and Serena are going into the theater. Oh. And they went in and saw the movie, and it was like literally the worst two hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting until they, they came out. But they, they're a mess with tears, and they, they love the film, and they, they put their names on it. So it, wow, it is a uh, photo. Yeah. But, but you've, you've kind of been through that process before, because mm -hmm. presumably with Ali... With Ali, yes. Like, Muhammad Ali, did, were you waiting for his blessing? I made the mistake of watching Ali for the first time sitting behind Ali. Oh, oh God. <laughs> yeah, so I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> never going to do that again. Um, you know, but midway through the movie, Ali turns to, to his wife at the time, and he says, girl, was I that crazy? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. He, he <laughs> <tried> it. <laughs> yeah. and it's interesting, the idea of, of parents having a dream for their kids, a kind of vision mm. for the kids. Because, Chris Rosie, you've got these two boys. Are you pushy parents? Are, have you, you know, are they going to keep you in the style we're to not. become accustomed? No. Do you know what? I, I, we're not, and I don't know whether it's because we can't be bothered to take them to... <laughs> 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 we, stand, we stand at the school gates and everyone's like, oh, Henry's got golf and football, and, and mm. I'm like, oh, don't take them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, 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 Robin's been mentioning doing karate. We're looking at the timetable and it's like 7 o'clock Friday night. We're like, nah, there's nah. no karate. <laughs> <laughs> there's no karate classes around here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, we're not. We're not very pushy. Actually. No. <laughs> weirdly, Robin weirdly wants to follow in my footsteps. He so he keeps, he's me. obsessed with making people laugh, which mm -hmm. is incredible. He's oh, a very that's sporty beautiful. kid and he's obsessed with yeah. trying to be funny, which is, yeah, really cool. But, Chris, you, you, were, you, you used to do the, the opening here, right? Yeah, I did the war... I was the warm-up guy for the show. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 I wasn't even the, Will, I wasn't even the warm-up guy. I was the guy they called when the warm-up guy couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> The less warm guy. <laughs> yeah, the loop, loop the loop warm. warm. <laughs> the cool, cool down guy. <laughs> yeah. now, now lovely. So your son is doing it. And <laughs> so well. And so well. Oh. Yeah, but talking about, so uh, pushy parents. You have a, kind of a, an opposite thing, Richard, where your mother is sort of pushing herself. She's doing press now oh, on, on the basis of you being... <laughs> I know. Well, because the, because the novels are slightly based on where my mum lives, which is in a retirement community, the novel's about four detectives in their 70s, uh, someone from the Sunday Times said, oh, we'd love to go and uh, interview your, your mum. We'd love to go and interview Brenda. And my mum's very shy. I thought there's no way my mum's going to want to talk to the Sunday Times. But I said to my mum, do you fancy talking to the... Sunday Times, you went, yeah, fucking right, I do. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm, Graham, I'm paraphrasing. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> she, she would like to. Uh, and so they went down, took loads of photographs, her and her mates were there. Uh, and I read the article, like, a couple of weeks later, and it's really a rather lovely piece, and she talks about me, she talks about where she lives, and talks about, you know, old age and, you know, li living yeah. in, in communal ways. And at the end, they say, you must be very proud of Richard and the books. And she went, do you know... His writing's a bit staccato for me. Mum's the world over there. Oh, 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 you want to meet your mum? <laughs> my mum would love to meet you. Yeah. That's what you that. My mum did that when I was on Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. It's like Britain's version of Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. And uh, I did a dance one night, and uh, she walked around a party that she was at where everyone had watched it. And the house just going, I didn't think he did well. <laughs> <laughs> Best dance, no, really bad. I think he'd be out next week. Only a mother can. And now here's the thing, Will. You may not know this. So Richard wrote a book that yeah. you're not reading. Uh, <laughs> but he does not worry because it was called the Thursday Murder Club. It was number one in the best set of charts here for months and months and months. Yeah. It's still in the chart. It's just not number one anymore. It was number one for... Oh, it's number one still. Oh, it is back to In the paperback, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's so, sorry. I sound corrected. Will it's yeah. still Will yeah. number Will one. Yeah. Still number one. I don't, I don't believe you just did that. And... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> guess, what? guess what Richard's done now, Will? What? Uh-oh. He's written a sequel. Oh! oh. Yeah! Well. Uh, it's called The Man... 
He died twice. It's out now. So this is the the Thursday Murder Club uh, yeah. reunited, but not really. It's really the next Thursday. It's it's right. Yeah, exactly. Right yeah, it, the, the, it, it picks up right at the end of the first book. A, a note is pushed under um, uh, someone's door, and at the very first scene in this we discover what the note says and who it's from, and essentially it lands the Thursday murder club that are four elderly detectives in a huge world of trouble. There's mafia, there's Colombian drug smugglers, there's cocaine, there's all sorts of stuff going on. In rest uh, of yet, Will? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, he had me at cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Will, I know what you like. <laughs> I know what you like. If you're going to see my mum, she'll have all the cocaine you could... <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, so it's obviously the first one... <laughs> I was worried it wouldn't do as well as the first one. It seems to it doing it even better, really which, well, is, which yeah. is really lovely. I'm absolutely thrilled with uh, with the reaction to it. It's, it's, and it's and I suppose what's interesting this time is because first time, you know, you put your book out in the world, yeah. you hope people like it. Yeah. Now you're getting that reader response. Did you tweak this book at all, kind of following what readers were saying, yeah, what they liked about the characters? It's fascinating. So I don't, I don't, I'm not huge on research. I love characters and I love story. That's yeah. the thing that I love. So I'm not sort of talking about, you know, how to strip down a gun or anything mm. like that. <laughs> uh, and also they have great readers who look over your book and in case there's like, a, there'll be a reader who says, oh, you said um, in 1972 that uh, May the 17th was a Wednesday. It was actually a Tuesday. Yeah. So you've got people who do all that for wow. you. Wow. Uh, but in the first book, the one thing they didn't pick up on, which I've had literally so much trouble with, they didn't pick up on it because it wouldn't occur to you that this was wrong. I set the scene in the Waitrose in Tunbridge Wells, and there is no Waitrose in Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and not only that, what? but it was what? 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 Say, say what now? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Talk about first world problems. Yeah. 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 Property values are plummeting in Tunbridge Wells right now. <laughs> it, it turns if out you it was... think I'm going to read that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> work. Yeah, so uh, if ever I go, I'm, I'm persona non grata in Tumbridge Wells. They were furious already that they didn't have a waitrose <laughs> in Tumbridge Wells. <laughs> and now this has made it much worse. You should now. build one with the profits from the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. But I hear there are some scenes that you avoid, you won't write. Like intimate scenes. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested in writing sex scenes. I always find it very peculiar when someone, you know, I'm, love and romance. That's absolutely fine. But you know, sometimes if you, we've all have friends who've written autobiographies, mm -hmm. and you read, and they start talking about their sex life, and you think, I really, really don't <laughs> want to Bit read much. that. And it's the same with authors. However much you kind of dress it up as one of your characters is having sex, yeah. everyone you've ever met, everyone in your family is going, oh yeah. Hold on that. a second here. I mean, like, uh -oh. his, uh, yeah. his yeah. creamy inner thigh, yeah. <laughs> her supple knee. You see, now, now we know what we'll like. <laughs> he's, listen, he's a good guy. I, I like, though, that for pensioner sex, supple knees would be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Dream of it. But that thing about it, because, like, doing sex scenes must be the same thing where you feel feel like people think they're seeing what you do. Sex scenes are the worst part of acting, because, like, <laughs> when you watch it in a movie, there's music, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's oh. wine, and there's all of that. <laughs> but on set, there's oh. a dude where... <laughs> holding the microphone. You see, I, I have that in real life. <laughs> 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 and, but Chris and Rosie, I mean, you are quite unfiltered on your yes. podcast yeah. about your own. Yes. 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 Well, weirdly, we don't actually talk about us personally having sex because we have so found we have out... It's only happened twice. <laughs> 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 Loving Rafe, chopping yeah. off. But it's been two really powerful <laughs> times. Yeah. Successful <laughs> little dude, yes, yeah. exactly. Why do it again? <laughs> <laughs> it worked. We found out that we're actually quite boring in we're the bedroom. We're very boring. Because of what people send us in, it's pure smut. Yeah, it's oh, really. The stuff people send and us. And we oh are really boring. One of our first ones that we got sent that really struck a chord mm. with everyone was some lady wrote in. I say lady. Uh, wrote in. <laughs> and she some said... Some slag wrote in. Wow! <laughs> 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 she said, because we said, you got any questions? And she wrote in and she said, I, I need some advice because I'm, and this was the phrasing, I'm giving my husband his first foursome this Wednesday. Wow. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our initial thought was, Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely sounds like a Saturday. Yeah. 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 I knew, I knew yeah. we would get it. Yeah. You can't have a foursome on a, a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. <laughs> I suppose it's easier to park on a Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> it's easier to get childcare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. It's true. Heavy true. Heavy. Yeah. True that. Uh, and if you're doing a foursome, you probably don't know what day it is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, one of the things I find fascinating about your book, uh, Will Smith, is that, you know, fame, it, it, sometimes it finds people accidentally, sometimes the level of fame finds people accidentally. Mm. You, I, I mean, a bit like King Richard, I mean, you wanted to be a movie star. Absolutely. That was your plan. Yeah, yeah, it was at the time, Eddie Murphy was my, my favorite star, and Star Wars was my favorite movie. And I, I saw myself as being Eddie Murphy in Star Wars. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> uh, so for me, the, the shot at Independence Day and the shot at Men in Black, I think Star Wars opened up my love mm. for science fiction. So that's why I made so many films in that, in that genre. And I love, there's a story about you. I think you, you were doing Fresh Prince, so you were known. Mm -hmm. And you went to a Planet Hollywood opening? Yes, yes. I went to, it was uh, Planet Hollywood was a, a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know. Did you? Did you? Oh, it's here. Yeah, yeah, It's still Planet, here. Yeah. So Planet Hollywood. It was when they were opening, and it was in in uh, Australia, you know. And you know, I was asked to to come to the opening. I went, and it was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was uh, ah yeah. It was like what I call them in the book, the Magi. You know, yeah. the three the three wise men, and they were standing and talking. And <clears throat> I walked into the crowd, and I was like, Hey guys, I'm sorry. Listen, I, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be the biggest movie star in, in the world. And I know if anybody can tell me how to do it, you guys can. And they, you know, they kind of looked at one another. And then, I, I guess, in, like, the secret movie star language, they communicated that Arnold was going to answer me. And, uh... <laughs> you know, and, uh, Arnold said, if you're going to be a movie star, <laughs> the movies can't only be successful in America. <laughs> You've got to go to every country in the world. You have to think of yourself as a politician running for the job of biggest movie star in the world. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then you took that advice. And I took it, and that, that's what I started doing. I started uh, going around the world. I wanted to have uh, premieres in places that had never had a premiere. Uh, we, we did the uh, first uh, premiere in Red Square in, in Moscow. Wow. And I started performing music outside of the premieres for fans that couldn't come. Oh. And I took that advice so to heart, and I was going to every single country in the world, and I started thinking of it as he said, as you're a politician yeah. running for the biggest movie star in the so world. So you, you talk about that, you do all that, you're studying the movies, you're studying what makes a movie star, and then there's a, a great moment in Bad Boys where Michael Bay wants you to do something. Oh, yeah. And you're, you're resisting it. Yeah, so my, Michael Bay, he, the fir he did the first Bad Boys. Look how skinny, yeah, I needed a couple extra kilos in that <laughs> thing. Um, Michael Bay was the director of Bad Boys, and it was my first shot at a, you know, a big movie. Mm. And he was like, dude, I want you to take your shirt off in this shot. You know, I was like, Mike, come on, man. <laughs> I, it's like, I, I don't want to take my shirt off and be, you know, it, it's, I hate that in action movies where the guy is all greased up with his shirt off, you know, walking through an abandoned church <laughs> with, with doves acting like that's normal, you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do that. He was like, dude, you're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. Take your freaking shirt off. <laughs> you know? so, so we ultimately compromised where I would have my shirt open, mm -hmm. and it was a you know a famous scene in Bad Boys where I'm running in slow motion across the bridge with the, hey, yeah. the shirt billowing. The doves behind you. Yeah, with the doves. <laughs> yeah. He put the doves in in post. Yeah. Special effects, <laughs> you know, but I but I, I did that scene, and I remember coming off, and he comes running over to me, and he slaps me in my chest, and he says, "I just made you a freaking movie star." <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's that moment. Here's here's that, that, yeah. There you are. Yeah, man, yeah. 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 Where's the movie yeah. star? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time to meet our remote guest tonight. He's the musical genius behind In the Heights, Moana, and the cultural phenomenon that is Hamilton. It's Lynn Manuel Miranda! <laughs> Yay! Oh. Yeah. Lovely to see you, Lynn 
Lin-Manuel Miranda, welcome along. Christian Rosie Ramsey are here, Richard Osman, Will Smith. Hello, hello, what's hello. up, man? What's up? Hey. And uh, where you. are you, Lin-Manuel Miranda? I'm in Washington Heights, New York, born and raised, uh, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an exciting time because your directorial debut, Tick, Tick, Boom, it, it's streaming now on Netflix and showing in select cinemas. And I've been lucky enough to see this. It is fantastic, but it's quite hard to describe in a kind of one-line pitch <laughs> as to what it is. How, how, do, you, how do you describe it? Uh, sure. Um... You know, Jonathan Larson was uh, an aspiring songwriter who would go on to write Rent, um, and he tragically passed away the night before um, the show's first preview performance. Wow. Um, and so, you know, I saw Rent when I was 17. It changed my life. It gave me permission to write musicals. And uh, at the crossroads in his life, he had the audacity to write an autobiographical one-man show about how no one is producing his work. Um, and it was kind of this amazing portrait of an artist as a young man. It was a rock monologue that he performed with a band. And so this is a movie um, about that early musical and about Jonathan Larson as a young man just trying to make his way. Uh, and we have the, your brilliant countryman, Andrew Garfield, playing Jonathan Larson in the film. Well, listen, we've got a clip. Uh, this is Andrew Garfield as Jonathan Larson performing the first number in the show. They're singing happy birthday, I just wish it all were a dream. It feels much more like doomsday. 3090 seems like I'm in for a twister. I don't see a rainbow, do you? Turn 30 in the 90s. Into my hands now, the ball is passed. I want the spoils, but not too fast. The world is calling, it's now or never. I mean, I've heard this, but I want it confirmed. So, Andrew Garfield wasn't a singer. I assumed watching this, he must have a, a background in musical theater. No, not at all. Um, and, I, you know, I didn't know whether he could sing or not. I said, do you sing? And he said, it's something I've always wanted to do, but have never done. When are you making the movie? And I said, not for at least a year. And he said, then I can sing. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. In, in a way, it was almost better. He has no bad habits. It's not like he thought he could sing and he couldn't sing. <laughs> um, he just... It was like a, 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 you know, a brand new instrument, and it was amazing to watch him sort of come into his power over the course of the year and, and learn piano. Because I'm a music snob. When I watch, uh, I hate when I'm watching a movie and you can see the band and they're all offbeat to the music that's actually <laughs> playing. Like, I was like, you have to play well enough that I can pan from your hands to your face and really sell that you are playing and singing all this stuff. And, of course, you're here telling us about uh, a film musical, but we should say uh, Broadway, back... Hamilton is on stage there, here, everywhere. Yes. Yeah, we, we just celebrated our 2,000th performance on Broadway uh, yesterday. Oh, fantastic. Yes, yes. Because, Will, you went to see Hamilton, didn't you? Yes, yeah. I, I loved Hamilton. And, and listen, I want to do a one-man show, and I would love for you to help me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this happening. I love this happening. <laughs> so I want to. I'm going to send you a copy of my book. I want you to look at it, and I, w I would love to do a one-man show. I've had this in my mind for years and years and years, and I think you are one of one in this business. Oh my God. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is worth happening. Yeah. 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 Uh, amazing! Amazing! I, I cannot tell you how nervous we were. 
<laughs> when Will and Jada came to the show. You know, it's a thing when like really great MCs come to yeah. see our hip hop musical. Yeah. Everyone's a little more just like, yeah. I'm gonna get a sc-. Yeah. Like everyone's just a yeah. little <laughs> more turned on. How we does were a bastard, orphan, son, son of, of a whore, and a Scotsman <laughs> dropped in the middle of a forgotten <laughs> spot <laughs> in the grid? <laughs> The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being a self starter by fourteen. Okay. It turns out people are fans. Wow. Yeah. Thank you guys. Wow. Will, I know you said you wanted a one man show, but I think these guys just auditioned for you. <laughs> well, it looks like it's, it's definitely going to be at least a four man show. Only Wednesdays. Only Wednesdays. Wednesday matinees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lynn, congratulations on everything. Good luck with Tick, Tick, Boom. It's on Netflix now. Thank you very much. Lynn Manuel Lynn Miranda! Miranda. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, girl. Thank you, everyone. Wow. I, I hesitate to uh, bring this up. I certainly did bring it up while Lynn Manuel was here. But you had a, a, a sort of musical rapping. Oh, moment no. in your career? No. <laughs> come on, you gotta spit something. Yes, spit something. Yes, come on. Well, when I was at school, <laughs> like, okay. When I was, uh, we well, won't make you do it. Forgive me. For what I'm <laughs> <laughs> when I was at school, when we got into the fourth year or fifth year, I think they they, they let you do your own assemblies. They they said one of the kids can do the assemblies, and, and it was a Christmas assembly. And me and my friend Eddie Shaw, I don't know if you know Eddie Shaw, he's an electrician in South East London. Very good, very very good one. Reasonable rates. <laughs> we 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 wrote an entire. Na- uh, rap version of the Nativity. Whoa! Wow! And performed it in front of the entire school. That's like a thousand kids. What on earth were we thinking? <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, you got to give us a little well? Jesus verse. You got to give did us a little well, Jesus Graham? verse. Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Two fifteen-year-old white kids who've just seen the Beastie Boys, you know, <laughs> singing about the Nativity. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's like the whole thing's a blur with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> we had that. We had that. Yeah, something very similar. Did you really? Yeah, something very similar. Gold, frankincense, and disappointing myrrh was a line. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll do. I'll, I'll do the very end. Uh, <laughs> it was. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> really? is, that, is that are you doing it now? Can I? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll say if you want to buy my book, buy it now. <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> to the man who died twice. Terrific. Um, okay. Uh, they tried to book a room, but they were unable. The innkeeper said, hey, guys, why don't you use my stable? The room was full of sheep and donkeys as well. The only light provided was the angel Gabriel. Mm. Just when he thought it couldn't get any stranger, Mary gave her a baby and put it in a manger. <laughs> <laughs> they were... Oh, they haven't finished. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? You fucking wish I'd finished. <laughs> I haven't. There's I'm more. Not, I'm, not, I'm not having it. Uh, they were joined by shepherds, leaving their flocks, three wise men and a human beatbox. While surrounded by all these strange geezers, they said, what's his name? She said, it's Jesus. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yes! Huh? Really good. I, yeah. Yeah? I should probably... Yeah, no. Yeah. I, 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 feel, I, feel uh, I should probably get him back on the Zoom. Yeah, get him, yeah, get him, yeah. Yeah. Get him back on get the him Zoom. Yeah. I mean, yeah. someone's thinking about his one-man show, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You've made his day. No, that's because, right, because uh, you know, my 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 first rhyme, you know, was uh, at the age of one, I had just begun on my journey to the T.O.P. And at the age of two, everybody knew I was a hellify huh, MC. Oh my! And I wrote, I wrote huh. I wrote uh, that. Oh, that's <laughs> so that's uh, so yeah, yeah. That's about a tie. Thank you. At least yours has some creativity. A to little it. bit. Can you say well done, Eddie Shore? Well, uh, <laughs> well done, Eddie Shore. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very good. Now, Chris and Rosie Ramsey, uh, just huge congratulations on your success because it is extraordinary. The the podcast is so big now. It's led to this tour, but you kind of think, oh, it's a tour. It's an arena tour. Whoa. You're touring arenas. Will Smith and Brad. Will Smith and Brad. Well, no, but Will's it's Smith's like t- touring arena. Yeah. yeah. The po- that's like, that's, yeah, it's... no one's actually done that before. When... Did you offer Will tickets? All right. <laughs> uh, his, his management said he was busy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tickets come with the book purchase. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so, we... so the arena, you've done you've done half of this tour, and now you're starting. So when, yeah. when can we see you next? So yeah, um, the next one is it's next week. It's the 30th of November, the O2 oh, arena. Um, so <laughs> what, what's, what's really yeah. crazy is we did Newcastle Arena, and that was nine and a bit thousand. That was unofficially the biggest live podcast ever. Yeah. Then we beat that at Wembley with eleven thousand. Wow. We're going to beat it again with eighteen and a half thousand at the O2. That's wow. fantastic. Wow. Just love that. I mean, wow. love that. Normally, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Graham. Give me a second here. So you, you just, you just. No, I'm sorry, really, no, no, I really go, do what I am. Go. Because so, so you just do your podcast mm -hmm. live in an arena. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, it's like no, but that's re like that. That's amazing to to be able to connect with people in in that way. Usually, if it's not music, mm. you know, or or food. Yeah. You know, you, um, <laughs> or religion, you, really can't, you, know, you can't really yeah. get people to it's come out in that way. That, that's it's really amazing. Did Arnold Schwarzenegger say to you, I tell you how to be the biggest yeah, yeah. podcast <laughs> in the world? Yeah. You've got to do your podcast live in front of the audience. <laughs> He would, have been, he would have been a very good Nelson Mandela, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me this: when people go to the O2, I mean, what? I don't mean to be like, what do they, what do they see? <laughs> Is it just the two of you? So, well, we <laughs> we kind of live on the fact that they've bought the tickets, just thinking that we're going to sit there and talk. But we have added a little bit. Extra. We do, we do sit We've, there and talk. We yeah. do the entire. The, the Spend a bit of money on the set. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, there's a sofa on stage. There's a sofa. Oh, the set in yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice Hold on a minute. Well. What's, what's, oh, the, what's yeah, the ticket line on. again? Yeah. <laughs> um, the second half of the show is different every single night because we get letters from the public. We get questions and things like the foursome thing from the public, and Rosie sources them, and I don't know what they are, so I react to them cold every night. So the second beautiful. section of the show is different every single night. Very That's risky. Yeah, very <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, but it's working well so far. Cool. And yeah. are the people who wrote those things, are they in the, are they in the crowd? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. So we did... That's four tickets sold. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, that's so quick, I nearly missed it. That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, when unless, we it's, did... unless it's Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But seriously, though, because it, it, you know, you had careers separately, so now you're together and you're doing this kind of, you know, talking about your beefs with each other in public. And What's it done to your marriage? Is it made it better, worse, the same? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Look at you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're well, leaning yeah. towards each other. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, after after, after like this show, we get in separate cars like Penn and Teller. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walk well, in, I go, Rosemary, she goes, Christopher, and then we start the show. Sign <laughs> a couple of checks. <laughs> um, it's, it's really nice. It's helped. We're, yeah. Communication helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. So that specifically Talking. for the podcast, the beef section, we sit yeah. down and we say, what's your beef? And we, for 143 episodes, have slagged each other off yeah. for various ways that one's annoying the other yeah. one. We haven't run out yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a backlog in the phone. <laughs> We've got loads, haven't we? Yeah, but talking about it has really... Talking about your problems within yes. a marriage helps so Absolutely. much. Yeah. But I think it helps... I think you help people listening as well. It's such a brilliant podcast, if you've never Aww. listened. It's so... I mean, it's Thank just you. Just delightful, Thank and you're you. so charming. But people listening as well, because people are having those conversations at home who are not communicating in the same yes. way. And then people just do. They just go, do you know what? Chris and Rosie were talking about this. It's not such a big deal. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm not surprised you're sending out the O2. I'm delighted you are as well. Thank I just think you. it's... Oh, my God, Thank it's, uh, so it's so wonderful. It's fabulous. We, we get contacted by people who say they've started their own beef... What's your beef section in their own house? And it'll be a woman, yeah, she'll, uh, like a, a woman emailed once saying, I've started my own beef. I thought, I hope you told your husband beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's a cereal. Right, dickhead, my <laughs> problem. <laughs> 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 and very quickly, we should mention, uh, Chris Rose, you've got a TV show now. We have, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, yeah. Next year on the BBC. Fantastic. And mm -hmm. is it a, a, a relationship show or a chat show? What is it? Uh, chat show, but host, uh, focusing on couples. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'd love to get couples on and celebrity couples and normal Will couples. Will and Jada. There you yeah. go. Will and Jada. Yeah. Yeah, Look, there you go. Yeah, your we... book, your invite, your tickets, it's all in the pool. <laughs> 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 can stay at our house. Yeah. yeah. Our house. yeah. Uh, I, all, I... all four of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's on to us. He knows what this is. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll come on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs>
listen, good luck with that and the tour. Uh, I know you've got to slip off to do a gig. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please thank Chris and Rosie Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> when he looked at me and said, stay, I froze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, guys, I saw that. I felt that. He meant it. Uh, God, God. It made me want to say, okay, now, hold on, hold on. No second. Now, now, you know, you're asking questions here. Now, now. <laughs> you know, now that he done said he had to go, now leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> Right, time for music. This British singer-songwriter has already landed a handful of Grammy nominations and taken Nashville by storm. Here performing her current single, Starlight, it is Yola! <laughs> Welcome. Oh. That 
is gorgeous. Uh, thank is you beautiful. so much. Oh, that is off the uh, brilliant new album, Stand For Myself, mm -hmm. which is out now, Yola. It sure is. Yes, yes. it is. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember how I discovered your first album, but I discovered it and loved it, and then this was coming out. But and I knew you worked out of Nashville, but where you're from here originally. Yeah, I'm from Bristol. I'm from Cider Country, darling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love Pirates, Cider. <laughs> That's it, for I real. Would, I would not have guessed that from the voice. I no, know. not at all. But if I say a long R. There you go. There she's hiding. Ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> <laughs> But now, it's interesting, because we talked to, to Will earlier about making that, you know, going into movies and really wanting to be in a movie. Yes. You just... It fell into your lap. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I was um, uh, playing... Uh, um, recording with some friends, and the producer's like, there's a movie going on. I have a sneaking suspicion you're going to be good at this. So he goes, send us a tape, and this little-known guy called Baz Luhrmann's going to have a look at it <laughs> and, see, <laughs> and see if you're any good. Because you know? this is the Elvis movie. It's the Elvis movie. Wow. And Tom Hanks is in it. Totally, it seems that Tom Hanks is in it. Wow. And so I'm playing the muse of Elvis, Sister Rosetta Tharp, no less. Mm -hmm. wow. And there's not things that people generally know about, mm -hmm. but Sister Rosetta Tharp kind of invented rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And didn't really get a lot of credit for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But as is the black lady way, hashtag yawn. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so that happens. And I'm like, so me and Baz are talking about this because we're addressing this serious inequity. Uh, so I'm practicing um, singing, and I'm, I realized that I've done this past of like throwing my voice. I used to do all this voiceover work. Um, but, like, musical voiceover work, replaying samples for, like, hip-hop artists and mm -hmm. dance artists and stuff. And I always had to throw my voice and kind of act it. So Baz's nose is right up to the glass of the studio, the vocal booth, just directing me, and it reminded me of this job I've been doing for ages. Wow. And I was like, I think I've got this. <laughs> I think I'm going yeah. to be totally fine. So then all I had to do was learn to shred, like, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd never done a solo in my life, guys. Wow. When's that going to be? When's yeah. that going to be out? When's the movie coming out? June next year. Wow. Because, because, Will, I mean, that thing of leaving music and then mm -hmm. starting acting. Yeah. I mean, you struggled a bit when you started. Yeah. You know, the thing, the 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 thing that I realized I didn't know at the time, but n nothing's wasted. Whatever you've done yeah. is useful, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever yeah. you've spent your time doing is useful, and it'll come back in the most. Uh, bizarre ways yeah and you know for for me it was first with music and my music videos and my music videos were very theatrical even though I had never acted so when the concept for the the Fresh Prince was presented it in my mind it felt like it was this big giant leap but it, it, it wasn't as huge a leap as I as I thought it would be you yeah. know it demands hard work and and study but what, whatever you've done whatever you're doing will always be useful in those transitions. Yeah, so you've got the movie coming out in June, and then are, have you, are you doing any gigs in London or yes, Britain? Yes, I have a show in London also uh, in June, I could understand. <laughs> oh, right. And so, yeah, we'll be here. But we'll oh, be here. But, but, honestly, this album, that song, you're mwah, just so, oh, so good. good. Thank you. I uh, fought for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You fought for it and you yes. won. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Yola! Yola, Yola, Yola! Uh, that is it. That's all we've got time for tonight. No time for red chairs. Please say thank you to all of my guests tonight. Uh, Chris and Rosie Ramsey. <laughs> and Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> Yola. Bridget Osman. <laughs> and Will Smith, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Join me next week with Pop Group Little Mix. Actor Google Mabato Raw. Superman Henry Cavill and the stars of Spider-Man No Way Home Zendaya and Tom Holland. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Actually, Chris, the biggest fan of Willard Smith Jr. is in the building right here, OK? And the finale of BBC Three's RuPaul's Drag Race UK is now streaming on iPlayer. And guess who's one of the judges? Hey, Graham, how you doing, baby? Next on BBC One, picking up where they left off, is Besson and the gang in BBC Three's In My Skin.